So I'm doing a presentation on being a musical performer, specifically acting. So the technical skills required are, like this term, include Stanislavski techniques for musical theatre. As most musicals are primarily this style, all actors must be realistic as a character. This is why some people get turned away from auditions before they've even had a chance to prove themselves. Some characters require specific looks, and if you don't suit that, the people who are auditioning you will just say, no, that's not your character. Um, one technique performers use is the magic shift. When you utilise this tool, you essentially ask yourself, what, what would this character do if this happened? And it develops a bit of a backstory for your character, and you start to understand how they would react to certain situations. So, a very <coughs> basic term is what if what would happen if this character was um, running? What would happen if they're walking? What would happen What would happen if they were interacting in a group of people that they didn't know? Um, and it is just about making backstory for your character and getting as much information as you can so that it is realistic in your role. You do look the part and you do exactly like, it's almost like how you would stereotype that character but with a lot of research rather than just a basic understanding. Another necessary skill is the illusion of the first time. So. As actors, we have to memorise our lines, we have to memorise blocking, choreography, and uh, the lyrics for songs. We all get to the point where this is completely ingrained in our mind, and we don't, like, it can get to a point where we know it, so we go, we set off early for blocking, and it just breaks the illusion, so you have to make it look like this is a real character, you have to make sure that the audience see this is a first time for everything and after a few shows you may start to feel stale which is why using the magic if you can develop your character a bit more as you go on shows you'll start to get more comfortable with the situations so that's why you should push yourself a bit more develop a bit more backstory so even if you're doing the same show two nights can be different so um, it just gives a completely positive reaction from the audience the, if, say if someone comes to see it on two nights, they won't be seeing the exact same thing and it won't look rehearsed. It will just look completely natural, which is what Stanislavski would want. So, oh, uh, there's a, oh, okay, no uh, performance skills. Can you say another one? Yeah, uh, I'll, <coughs> performance skills, this is just a few. I didn't, I didn't want to go into detail here because I go into detail about them very thoroughly later in employability skills because they like correlate with each other. But although it's not a performance skill, teamwork will have a huge contribution to the final outcome. Because if you don't get along with your peers and you don't make an effort to get to know them, that will come across on stage. You'll, it will be obvious that you don't have a relationship with them. So, I'd like you to uh, come on here and get prepared and get a little quick uh, stand exercise with you. So, choose a scenario. It could be breaking up with someone, it has to be something you can relate to. Play a scene with exaggerated characters and reactions. Just for now, choose your uh, scenario. Uh, my dad, leave it alone. I can't relate to that. Oh, what can you relate to? Uh, it's too simple. I'm just going to go out. Okay. Yeah. No, but I still got the same. That works. There we go. Okay. Yeah. Okay, now let's create some dialogue for it. Choose who you would want to be in that situation. Well, I think that's fairly obvious. Yeah. <laughs> um, I shall be the floor me. Okay. Now, have you decided? Yeah. Create some dialogue now. So, how would you react in that situation but exaggerate it? What? No. Harold Lewis. I would you, my dearest really sorry, darling, it's just, be my it's not you. ultimately darling, beautiful, excessively controlling? Yeah, 
girlfriend. Oh, my job. Oh, yes. I love you so much. The moon in the back. Oh, I'll go no, and have my you. children. What do you want? Okay, now stop. Yeah. Now. Now play the character. Uh, play the scene, but pause in between. Give each character a moment to have an inner monologue, but this time being realistic with it. This correlates with the magic if to give more backstory. Because <coughs> although you may be seeing them physically do something, they will always have a motive behind it. Yeah. Cool. Uh, I, I really just can't do this anymore. But like, I really like. She's never it's said that she wants to be my girlfriend. I'm just it. making the assumption here, who knows? I was just thinking about it. Do you it. want to be my girlfriend? It's not you. I mean, he's quite lovely. But it is, it is you. He's alright, but Tessie's nice enough. Yes, I, do I love you so, so much. much. <gasps> <laughs> <laughs> Wait, what? <laughs> that was just to give backstory to the character, so you would understand how, how they would react in every situation. So, I didn't have a lot on this because I know you had already done about mental health, but every performer needs to be resilient every day. Whether you're going for an audition or just simply turning up to a rehearsal, you have to go into everything you do with a positive mindset. Because it, it doesn't take much for an actor to snap. They're put under so much stress to be perfect that whether that's looking the right way or whether it's picking up choreography or blocking, that if you're not in a positive mindset, one comment from your director or a peer <coughs> could cause you to snap. So the best thing to do, like Lucas McFarlane has said, don't go into an audition um, expecting a job. Go in there and prove yourself. You don't have to be extravagant about it, it can be subtle, it can just be changing how someone would do something and putting your own style onto it. But if you if you really expect to get a job instantly, whether it's your first or maybe your hundredth time auditioning for something, if you expect to get every role just like that, you're gonna be in an awful mindset when you don't get it. So these are responsibilities an actor you need to be able to job seek well because if you're not finding auditions for yourself, even though you may have an agent, you're never going to get the right role for you. And you need to be able to network yourself so you have a good, uh, so say you have a good social media that will allow more people to interact with you and you will start to uh, gain fame and such. And this will really help your career. Again, you need to uh, work with an agent to find a better audition for you because you will be busy working on other projects and you may have to audition for another thing while already working on a project. project. So having an agent will really help you with that. I won't go over all of them, but some of them are obvious. Prepare and attempt for auditions and learning lines are vital. If you don't prepare for an audition and just expect to rock up and give a good show, it's not going to work. You need to work for everything you uh, want being an actor because it's such a... Uh, competitive business that you need to be at top of your game all the time when you're auditioning. Um, even though you are primarily going to be a musical theatre actor, doing voiceovers and advertisement, advertisements to promote what you're doing is vital as well because if it will also boost your social status if you're the one shown to be promoting a big show, whether that's West End or even if you're the face of a school show or a local amateur group, it will <coughs> um, boost where you are in the industry. So for the training groups, if you're completely committed to being a musical performer, you will go, you'll most likely go to a specialised musical performance college. So I've got five up here, Arts Ed, Mount View, London Contemporary Dance School, if you wanted to take that approach. Uh, Central Speech and School of Drama and uh, Guildford School of Acting. All, all the schools will focus on different aspects of being a musical theatre performer, but uh, eventually they will, will get you to the same place. You might not be on different, you might be, not be on level grounds, but you should go to the school that suits you best because you might be able to go to a better school, but if it's not right for you, 
it won't do the best that you can do. And uh, pre-18, you can do uh, these as well, or the first three you can do pre-18, which is a level two certificate of performing arts, and it's oh, sorry. <laughs> level three extended diploma in performing arts would be post-18, and an A-level in drama and theatre would be real good helps getting into a, a, a performing arts school because <coughs> you could have complete natural talent and just rock up and get um, get in but you should prepare as much as you can to, um, to set yourself up for success so these are some statistics about people who have gone through performing arts schools 75.8 percent of people are employed when they come out 10.8% will go on to study further and they will most likely look into a specific uh, like sub subsection of musical performing. Like people who study further will most likely go on to be directors, musical composers or musical directors. Um, sadly, 4.9% will be unemployed. It's a very competitive business and some people just don't make it. and might not have anything to fall back on and uh, some employability uh, skills that I wanted to cover I said I mentioned earlier but uh, didn't want to go into much detail about so confidence is a vital aspect in <coughs> getting into a role if you turn up to an audition and you're not confident you could be the best person in the room but if they don't see that from you straight away they might have already uh, said no to you in their mind and they won't even walk, like focus on you so as soon as you walk in you have to be confident you have to show that you want this as com confidence will also coincide with how you appear on stage whether it's because it will counteract stage fright as I've felt this year I uh, sat on stage for the first time turned up to an audition and I was frozen in fear, I couldn't do it, and then eventually I became more confident with what I was doing and might not have got it right, but I looked good doing it. <laughs> um, I touched on this earlier, the ability to market and network yourself. People, as you start to be in more shows, people could come to you for roles, but you're not going to get that if you don't build, uh, build your reputation up. It'll, you'll just have to carry on going to auditions, which is what most people have to. But the people who want to get to the top will work their way up, whether that's social networking, appearing on TV, or just uh, becoming a household name, which will cooperate with that. And I touched on this again earlier, resilience and self-discipline, as well as stamina. You have to be com uh, completely resilient as an actor, because you'll put under so much stress and self-discipline. You have to turn up to every rehearsal. You have to make sure you're prepared for auditions. And that completely comes, that's not up to anyone else to sort out for you, that's up to you. And the stamina is, you're gonna be working long, irregular hours every day. You have, you have to be at the top of your game every day. Otherwise, if you have an understudy, they will get put ahead of you. Because I know they will want to, they will want it a lot more than you if they're in that role where they're so close to getting what they want, but they're told someone's just a little bit better than them. So again, I touched on this earlier: an analytical mindset and the ability to reflect. You have to be able to understand the direction you're given in a rehearsal isn't a criticism; it's something you can do to improve. Because ultimately. The directors have a vision and they just want you to put on what they want. As much as you can have creative input as an actor, if it's not at all like the director's vision, they'll tell you that, they'll be brutal about it, and they will want you to do <coughs> what they want. So you have to be able to take that criticism, uh, take that direction as, <laughs> as feedback in a positive way rather than thinking you're not good enough otherwise that will send you spiraling into a, uh, a positive mindset teamwork is also a massive part of musical theatre you have to cooperate with all of your counterparts 
Otherwise, again, like I said earlier, you will not look like you have a proper relationship on stage. And organizing, organization and time management. Some people will have agents. Most people going into the business will have agents. But then when you're starting out, you will just, it will be up to you. You have to go to the auditions, whether that's for a performing arts school or for an actual uh, <coughs> production. For performing arts schools, most likely won't have an agent by then. You will have to organise it by yourself, turn up on time, be prepared for it, and that all comes with it. You, it's just a given. If you're not organised, you will not get anywhere in this business. So the salary. As much as people might work for all of their life, they could end up on 10 grand a year, which is the sad truth of being an actor. Some people will get even less than that if they don't make it. Whereas a majority of successful actors, this can include some West End actors, only get 30,000 a year. <coughs> if you manage to get onto Broadway, if you're one of the shining stars of musical theatre, there is happily a minimum salary of $1,900 a week which is pretty appealing, but people see that salary and think that's easy to get to. That's what they want. So they'll work for it, but in the end they might just not be good enough. It's such a tidy cut of people to get onto Broadway that that's why you see that the acting business is so hard, just a lot of people just don't make it. So with my personal experience, which admittedly isn't a lot, I've only been in one musical, but you learn that there will be people that you don't want to work with. People you might find annoying or just um, just don't work as hard as you. At, at the start, obviously, like I can admit that I was probably one of those people. I didn't work because I was embarrassed to dance in front of people. I didn't want to sing. And it was just, it was a lot of hard work, which is where you start to realise that we wanted it to be the best show we can. And you just at that level, you see how much pressure <coughs> professionals must be under. Because I was scared to sing in front of maybe, uh, maybe what, 60 people in the cast. And they have to sing in front of thousands every night. It's not an easy thing to do. Uh, okay, wait, thank you, thank you, thank you, Any questions, yeah. any questions for Harry? I have one. <coughs> I want to go back to um, um, a really interesting stuff you said about Stanley Glassy's technique, technique and um, it having to feel like it's the first time each time. Can you give me an example uh, from Bridge, from playing Finicky, where you had to be really, really aware not to preempt um, uh, preempt um, a reaction so that it felt like it was the first time? There's the one moment where you think, oh, well, I've just given away that that's how Finicky feels way before. So in the outside the Bowling Palace scene, there were times where I, we were looking for uh, the Flaming Dukes, who were a rival gang that we were about to fight. And there were times <coughs> where I reacted to uh, the person who was playing Roger coming in before he'd come in and like treating it like he was just Roger rather than um, a Flaming Duke. The whole point of it was that it was a gag that he's coming in all crazy and we think it's one of them trying to attack us. And that was, I think it was in the dress room. I um, preemptively just said, oh, it's Roger, and <laughs> instead of running away. And yeah, that was a good. Also, um, when Danny and Sandy meet for the first time, there were times where I would react before he had even seen her. <laughs> Which luckily I didn't do on the show now, <laughs> but I definitely did it in the matinee. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you? So one of the, the things you mentioned was the uh, taking direction as well as putting your own spin on it. Would you say to get hired it's more important that you can take the direction well or if you can kind of improv a bit? Honestly, I think it's a bit of both. You ha if you can't take direction well, you're not going to get a job. But then if you want... If there's a character that you really want and you're in a room full of amazing actors who will just take direction, you have to show that you're different. You have to improvise even a little bit to show that there is something else about you, that you're not just doing what you're being told. 
you are actually thinking for yourself. Um, I know obviously we're focusing mainly on music theatre. I was just wondering if you were looking to go more into straight acting, or like with either plays or TV and film, is there a different route that you take as opposed to going to drama or a performing arts college? I suppose for if you wanted to go to straight acting, there are specific schools that focus in uh, on whether that be film or just straight acting. So I know Bristol on Vic has a completely film acting course. As much as it might not be the highest quality, that is the route you're going to take. You need to specialise in what you want to do. Fantastic. Thank you.